Assalamu alaikum dear learners. I welcome you all here at Allama Iqbal Open University Studios. I hope you all are fine and enjoying the weather. The topic that we have selected for today is the future continuous tense. And again the idea is taken from the book that has already been provided to you by the university. To get the more details about the topic, I'll invite our own expert Mr. Arshad Nehmood. Assalamu alaikum Mr. Arshad. Wa alaikum assalam and today I'll say how are you? I'm fine and how are you doing? Me too, thank you. The topic that we have selected for today is future continuous tense and I want you to elaborate every detail to me and to our dear learners. You know, in one of the programs in the past we said there is no future tense. I know, I know and yes. I still remember that. Yes, so there is no future tense learners just to, just to revise the thing, uh, just to tell you that there are two tenses past and present but future tense definitely is used with the help of will or shall today we'll be discussing these tenses you know I often discuss these tenses from two different angles function form. and form uh, form is very important it is taught in our schools colleges but the thing that lacks is the, the function, function of people the don't teach functions as a result you learn the form and as soon as the examination is over you forget everything uh, today uh, once again I'm because of that reason focusing on the form and the function. first and then the function. Uh, form uh, as usual I'll be discussing three different uh, forms affirmative or positive, mm -hmm. second is negative and, and the third is interrogative or question form. Now form here is uh, subject and then we've got will or shall according to the subject plus B. B is very important here because the next verb after B is going to be in the ing form mm -hmm. and then object if it is needed. Required. I'll make a sentence Anthony will be doing his work. Uh, I'll ask you some question based on pronunciation not grammar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How will you spell the word Anthony? A-N-T-H-O-N-Y. Good. So you know how people pronounce this word? Anthony. Anthony. An Anthony Quinn. Mm -hmm. It is Anthony. <clears throat> so the sentence was Anthony will be doing his work. Second example, you will be picking apples in winter. I will be boiling eggs tonight. She will be buying an oven tomorrow. So, um, sorry for interruption. Kindly write down the formula. It's subject, then will or shall according to the subject, then be and then verb with the ing form and then if the object is required. Write down the formula for yourself. You're a fast learner. Good. Oh, thank You've you. You've got very good memory. <laughs> Pakistan will be playing football World Cup in 2030. Do you think Pakistan will be playing you never football? Know. <laughs> football. Football? Uh, I don't think so. I think our team is very bad. We don't have this trend in Pakistan. But it is a very popular game in Brazil, Argentina, that is England. Latin America, yes, Europe as well. The Manchester United team. Mm, exactly, form. that is club cricket. Club football, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, form is, we've got the next form that is negative. Very simple, very easy. Subject plus will or shall according to subject. And then after not. shall or will we use not. And then be as we did in positive. Mm -hmm. Plus ing form and object if needed. Or if there is no object, sometimes we can have an adverb. Okay. I'll explain, I'll give some examples. Okay. Anthony will not be doing his work. Here, will and not, and then be doing is there. Mm -hmm. You will not be picking apples in winter. So in winter here is not object. It is adverb of time. But if you 
compare this with the first sentence that was Antony will be uh, will not be doing his work so his work is object right but in winter is the adverb of place right I will not be boiling eggs tonight again tonight is adverb, adverb. but adverb of time mm -hmm. she will not be buying an oven tomorrow again uh, we have got an object in this sentence mm -hmm. and adverb as well mm -hmm. We will not be playing football World Cup in 2030. Right. So I will repeat the formula for you. Uh, the formula is subject, then will or shall according to the subject, then not, and then be, and then the verb with the ing form, and then in the end, the object if required. Good. Shall we move to question form now? Yes, sure. In question form, will or shall we start the sentence with will or shall. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come to, they're, they're brought to the beginning of the sentence. And then subject is here, plus B, plus ING form, and then object, right. if required. Will Anthony be doing his work? Yes, sure. Same, same sentence. Will Anthony be doing his work? Will you be picking apples in winter? Will I be boiling eggs tonight? Will she be buying an oven tomorrow? Will we be playing football World Cup in 2030. 2030. Question form. So I should repeat the formula. It's will or shall in the beginning is the question form. Will or shall in the beginning, then the subject with be and then verb with the ing form, in the end the object, if required. And one thing is missing. The adverb? No, no the question mark. Good, very <laughs> good. Question mark, do you think it's important? Very important. Punctuation, they actually let us know what was the tone Tone or sometimes like they've got different ideas. Question mark shows it is a completion of a statement, a sentence that is not a statement, that is a question. It is being asked. Yes, in spoken we simply rise, raise over tone. tone. Mm -hmm. Will you come? But in written we put a question mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like talking about punctuation, I hope you know the difference between semicolon and uh, colon. Colon and like colon two is used for example, yeah, two dots. Uh, colon, for example, if I say, if you want to make a plan for Murray, you need the following items, colon, colon. and you will state those items. items. Uh, there are different uh, functions of colon, uh, few, two or three, uh, but here the most crucial is one I've just stated. Mm -hmm. And if you compare colon with semicolon, mm -hmm. semicolon, in fact, is the extension of the same previous idea. Mm -hmm. Look, he's not very hardworking, semicolon, he keeps on wasting time. Right. Referring back to, but sometimes I think of these uh, punctuation marks and I find them quite funny. You know why? Uh -huh. Semi means half. Look, circle and semicircle. Mm -hmm. What is semicircle? Half circle. Half circle. Uh, and uh, semi, let's say, uh, semi final, something half, of half the final mm -hmm. before the final. But when I say semicolon, it should be one dot. I know. <laughs> Because it should be half of? Half of the colon. colon. Colon is with two dots. Semicolon should be only one dot. One dot. But that is a full stop. Yeah. But then look at even full stop. Why do we use full stop in English? To or end in, the statement. You know, end the statement. And why do we begin the next with capital? Because in English? it's a new statement. But full stop means. <laughs> it was ended. Right. So I know that is funny. Are, yeah, that is funny. But, but important as well. Punctuation is important. Very important in English. Shall we move to the function now? Sure. Please. Function, I hope you know where or how we use this tense. Right. The future con continuous tense represents an action as going on at some point in future time. I shall or will be visiting him tomorrow. We are keeping in mind the time, tomorrow. Right. Uh, one more sentence. Uh, in the next program, we will be discussing something else. Right. I'm imagining that time in future. They will be buying a new house next month. And Jacob will be talking to Thomas soon. Dear learners, I try my best to, to bring you the things which are very useful for you, uh, apart from syntax, I mean grammar. So in this sentence, for example, Jacob is a word that you can see is usually mispronounced in our so, uh, social context. We pronounce it Jacob. Um, that is in Urdu, Yaqub, but in English it should be Jacob. And Thomas is usually pronounced as Thomas. It should be, it should be Thomas, like we just mentioned Anthony, not Anthony. So there are different names that we must keep in mind, uh, like how to pronounce them. If we, you mispronounce them, it leads uh, to bad impression on the ears of the listener. 
and the person is from that society, for example, if you're pronouncing Charles and the person who is speaking to is also from England or his name is Charles, he might mind this thing. So it's something very important, I think. We must keep in mind grammar plus pronunciation. Okay, coming back to the topic, one more example. Will his mother be making tea now? Imagine you're imagining that time, like the action going on in your mind. The lion will not be hunting anymore. People will no more be using technologically old cell phones. And our country will soon be utilizing solar energy. I hope so. We also use uh, future progressive uh, tense. Progressive, I hope, you know, continues. Two different names for the same tense. We use this tense uh, to refer to future events which are fixed or decided or which are expected to happen in the normal course of events. It does not suggest the idea of personal intentions. For example, the hospital will be setting up a camp for the asthma, for asthma on Saturday. Asthma, A-S-T-H-M-A. People usually pronounce this word as asthma, and we say asthmatic patient. Asthmatic patient, and the word is asthma. The name of the disease is asthma. In Urdu, we call it dhamma. He will be telephoning soon, and I will be visiting you one of these days. Again, same form, B plus ING form, imagining something going on sometime in future. This tense is also used to predict the present. You see something interesting? Future tense is being used to predict something that is going on now. So it is used to predict the present, to say what we think or guess it's probably happening now. For example, don't phone Amjad now. You're imagining that this thing is happening right now, so you should not disturb him because he is taking lunch. I think we should not go to him. Why? He must be discussing his case with the doctor. Interesting, isn't it? So English sometimes becomes quite confusing. Sometimes we use present tense for future Sometimes we use future tense for present. Look, present tense for future. I'm going to him tomorrow. So here, tense is present, but referring to future. But in this tense, we are using future tense, but thinking of like the case uh, that is like something that is going on right now. This tense uh, can be used to make polite inquiries about people's plans. By using this tense to ask, what have you already decided? The speaker shows that he does not want to influence the listener's intentions. It's very important. Uh, compare, will you be staying this evening? It's very polite inquiry. And the second is, are you going to stay this evening? It is not very polite comparing with the first one. I'll discuss these in detail. First sentence, what I said, will you be staying this evening? It's very polite inquiring, and this suggests that I simply want to know your plans. I don't want to want uh, you to stay, or I don't want you to leave. I don't have any personal intentions. But comparing this with the second sentence, are you going to stay this evening? Here, maybe the speaker uh, is pressing or putting some sort of, maybe he's, tr he's trying to influence the listener. And if you want to make... Uh, request or order you can say will you stay this evening it is sort of let's say or will you stay this evening this is sort of request so in english sometimes uh, the things may appear same at surface level but they may uh, give you quite different idea and this reminds me of something very interesting look at two sentences sentences they stopped to talk and they stopped talking can you judge like they stopped to talk and they stop talking. Look at the form. Both belong to past form. They stopped to talk and they stopped talking. In the first one, they stopped past form to talk. That is to infinitive. And the second one, they stopped talking. ING form is there after stopped, which shows that sto like both the sentences are in the past. But the difference is that when I say they stopped to talk, means they looked at each other, they met somewhere, they stopped. Why? To talk. It means they started talking. And they stop talking, it means they ended. I was saying English becomes confusing sometimes at surface. So this is one of the examples. One more example. I saw him run and I saw him running. 
and I saw him run, action was complete. The action of running was completed by the runner. I saw him run. Or if I provide you some easier, better context, <clears throat> the thief, uh, the police saw the thief run. It means when the police saw or the, when the police reached, the thief had already run. <clears throat> Sorry. And the police saw the thief running and caught it. So running means here action was going on and the police caught it. So be careful while using these structures in examination. If you're not sure of a structure, don't use it. Last but not least, progressive form of going to is also possible with this tense. I'm going to be working all day tomorrow, but usually we say I will be working mm -hmm. the whole day tomorrow. So I won't have time to shop. Uh, here going to can be used for the same future progressive tense, right. but may not be very common. Uh -huh. I just wanted to ask you, what is the major difference between the present continuous tense and the future continuous? I mean, how can we differentiate between them? Mm. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, important, I think, because people commit mistakes in examination. And they, st they simply mix them up. I know, up. and I've been through that yes. difficulty. If you look at uh, the name of this tense, future continuous. So future means will or shall must be there. there. And then B must be there. B, in fact, is a form like instead of is MR. In fact, is MR was word are different forms of B. Look, in continuous, I say, I am standing, you are. For you, it becomes R. For me, it becomes M. M. Or for we are R. standing. And she is or he is standing. It means in continuous tense, in present, is MR have to be used very carefully. Mm -hmm. But in future continuous tense, we must add something else. That is will or shall B. plus B. Why B? Because it is a rule that after will, we or must shall. add the base form. And the base form is not is MR. The base form is B. B. Good. And some people are often confuse like uh, he doesn't have with he doesn't has. They say, what is shouldn't be he doesn't has because of he no they, but we use have with does yes but he doesn't have hmm. is it wrong or right he doesn't have it is it is right, it is right. if i say he doesn't has that, that is, is wrong. wrong why because does changes that after has does there must be base form mm -hmm. after does it should be the have. base form and many people in pakistan maybe most of you think that has is a base form no that is wrong have is a base form and it has got a different shape in present, that is, has. In the past, it changes into had. So he doesn't have a book is the right sentence. Right. Not he doesn't has, that is wrong. So in present tense, present continuous, we use is MR. I mean, any of the forms of B according to the subject. If it is I, then M. If it is you, it is R or he or she is. is. And then ING form of the verb. Because the name of the tense is, the names are, the name is continuous. Present continuous, future continuous. The difference is that in present continuous, it is is MR, is MR. plus ING form. Mm -hmm. And in future continuous, it will will, will or shall, shall plus B, B and then and the verb continuous the form. So uh, if people keep these rules in mind, I hope they can learn these tenses quickly and for longer time. Because these very names are very important. Look I at know. perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect continuous tense. It means, if I say present perfect continuous, it means the tense, the perfect means has or have. Present means not had, but has or have. Continuous means there should be ING form as well. Yeah, actually, so he I wanted has you been doing like this. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to differentiate the present continuous tense and the future continuous tense with reference to a, an example. I mean, right. Example is, I am flying today. I'm, I'm not an aeroplane. <laughs> I'm flying to some other city or some yes, other country. Yes, And I will be flying next month. So what's the difference? Will coming in. The action that is yet to be done. The yes, function of the. But I'm imagining an action mm -hmm. at some point in future. I will be. Look, tomorrow you will be taking lunch at this time. Mm -hmm. Imagining something that is yet to take place, but that will be going on. Duration is there. 
right. for future. So when I say I will be flying next month, I can imagine and duration and the things are in my mind at particular time in future. So I am, I am standing here today and I will be standing here maybe next week. Now I seriously agree with the idea that if we know the function of the tense, then learning grammar is no more harder. It is. It becomes easy. You're right, and people learn it for longer time. I know. Because what happens in schools? I still remember. I learned these tenses when I was in maybe class five. At high school, secondary school, in my college, in my university, even I learned these rules. But the moment the examination was over, I forgot most of the things. Everything just flew away. Yes, and uh, learners, I will advise all of you to practice these things. You must find I somebody know. in your family to speak English with. I'm not saying English is the only language in the world, but since you're learners, and English is uh, a global need now. It is a need of, uh, it is something that is shared by the international community. So you must speak English with somebody in your family, with a cousin, with a friend, anybody, so that you can use these tenses. It is not simply uh, learning for the sake of examination. You must learn these tenses for the sake of communication. I know. Have I you got any, any foreign friend? Anybody from some other country? Yes, I do have. From? From England. One from England, one from America. That Not is why I'm major, I have got the major confusion in which accent I have to talk to the American friend and in which accent in, I have yes. to talk to the And how to pronounce British sometimes. Friend. Sometimes you pronounce something in British English and American would say... And then I have to rephrase it. Yes. I, I meant this. Yes, but you're lucky because you've got person from English speaking countries, but imagine you had a friend from China or Russia Ooh, life has been or, or from Saudi Arabia. It would be... It is very hard because sometimes you can't judge what the person is saying and sometimes we think what we are saying is very clear but for them that might be quite difficult. I'll give one example. I had uh, uh, like a Chinese friend. I said, give me a pen. He said, what is pen? I said, pen. He said, what is pen? I said, a pen. He said, okay, pen. I thought you were saying pen. Right. So they confuse ka and ga. If we say ka, they say you're saying ga. Hmm. It is just because of the influence of the mother tongue. So that is natural all over the world that different languages have got different moods, different moods of grammar, of sounds. So if you want to learn English language, you must practice it. You practice must practice the rules make of it English. Perfect. And translation doesn't help much. Seriously. Because in school, like uh, I still remember our teacher used to say, ga hai, gi hai, ge hai. That is right for making people understand. But if you simply ignore the practice side, the function side, it's people of no don't use. Don't Otherwise, learn. it's Otherwise, this, this program is going to be of no use if you don't practice anything at your place. So you keep on practicing. Right. So uh, people, if, if, if they want to learn uh, the things in a better way, in minute manners, I think, it is very good if they compare English rules with Urdu rules or the rules of their mother tongue. Mm -hmm. They may remember for a long time. I keep on giving examples from Urdu language because I feel that if... Uh, it's going to be more helpful. Yes, because it helps in understanding the language, our language. A few days ago I was uh, reading something interesting um, in a book by Frank Palmer. He's written a very good book on grammar. Mm -hmm. He says in English, for example, uh, boy, it's a noun. When we use an adjective, for example, a good boy or a tall boy, tall remains same. Tall for boy, tall for girl, tall for people. But in order what happens? Lamba, Larka, Lambi, Larki, Lambe Log. It means in Urdu language, noun changes the the adjective as well. Right. But in English, it remains the same. same. So in that area, English may be easier than Urdu, Urdu. language. So I think Mr. Ashir, this is all for today. I mean, otherwise it's going to be too much for our learners and they are going to be in some difficulty. I would repeat, kindly note down all the formula that Mr. Ashil explained to you. That is going to be helpful. That is going to make things more easier to you. That is all for today. Take care. Allah Hafiz.